Thanks so much for your company. I am Pius Kojo Baka. We can now take a look at our stories and Ghana's economy for the first quarter of 2023 grew at a slow rate of 2.0% compared to the same period in 2022 with a rate of 2.7%. The agricultural sector recorded a highest growth rate of 5.9% followed by the services sector with a rate of 5.5% while the industry sector recorded a contraction of 4.3%. Addressing journalist, government statistician, Professor Samuel Kobnenim attributed the expansion to the growth recorded in crops and cocoa subsectors of 7.2%. According to figures from the Ghana Statistical Service, the agriculture and services sectors expanded by 5.9% and 2.0% respectively. However, industry contracted by 4.3%. For the agri sector, all the subsectors expanded except forestry and logging, which contracted by 6.9%. The crop subsector registered the highest growth rate of 7.0%. All the 10 subsectors in the services sector expanded. Information and communication subsector registered the highest GDP growth rate of 17.3%. It was followed by accommodation and food services activities with 11.2%. With regards to industry, the construction, mining and quarrying and electricity subsectors contracted. Interestingly, the manufacturing sector grew at a rate of 2.1%. Here is government statistician, Professor Samuel Kobdenim. Between the third quarter 2022 and the third quarter 2023, the economy grew by 2.0% year-on-year quarterly GDP, third quarter 2022 compared to third quarter 2023. This growth rate of 2.0% signifies a 0.7 percentage point drop as the economy grew by 2.7% between the third quarter 2021 and the third quarter 2022. From a non-oil perspective, the economy grew by 2.1% in the third quarter 2023. This growth rate of 2.1% is a 1.2 percentage point drop compared to the growth rate of 3.3% between the third quarter of 2021 and the third quarter of 2023. In terms of the size of the economy, the services sector continued to remain the largest sector of the Ghanaian economy with a share of 42.1%. Industry and agriculture came second and third respectively, with shares of 33.0% and 24.9% respectively. And we've got to interrogate the figures further. Joining us via Zoom, and, and um, of course, to do that is Professor um, Peter Quarty, who has joined us via Zoom for more. Thanks so much, sir, for joining me on Business Life. Um, first off, I'd want to pick your thoughts on this. What do you make of the slow growth in quarter three this year compared to that of um, last year? Well, the um, growth as recorded um, was below expectation uh, uh, to the best of my knowledge, but I think usually um, we grow faster in the third and fourth quarter, especially in the last quarter of the year where growth is quite uh, significant. Um, and this one, uh, if you look at the areas where we recorded negative growth rates, you will find that it is mining and quarrying as well as construction. And for construction, um, it is expected because we've not been paying contractors. We've seen uh, abandoned road projects or uncompleted road projects. And therefore, it is not surprising. But since 2022, uh, construction sector uh, has been recording negative growth rates. But for mining and quarrying, I'm still, I'm yet to get a fine details as to why that is the case. Um, um, gold, and, and other minerals and oil uh, declined in volume. I, I don't know why that was the case, why they declined in volume. In terms of prices, prices were oscillating, but uh, we have not seen any significant drop in the price or prices of those commodities. So um, I'm yet to get a fine detail from the statistical service to understand why um, mining and quarry recorded such a huge um, contraction. Uh, decline, contraction, mm. about 8.1%. We need to delve into that. And then if there's any uh, remedial measures, we put that in place so we, we grow our economy. All the other sectors were doing quite well. We saw agriculture uh, performing quite rapidly. The crop sector, for instance, recording this growth of 7.2%. Even manufacturing um, recorded some modest, uh, some marginal growth rate of 0.9%. So we see signs of recovery, but for mining and quarrying, for me, it's quite surprising. Mm. And you've mentioned some of the surprises um, you, you saw in the figures there, especially for agri sector. 
recording the highest growth rate in the third quarter. Does it come to you as a surprise? And what really accounted for that, you would say? Uh, no, no surprise. We have been, uh, you know, depending on rain-fed agriculture, and we, we saw how much rains recorded um, in, in the second and third quarter. So certainly, uh, all things being equal, we expect yield to improve. I don't think we have invested so much into fertilizers like we used to do. Um, if you speak with the um, uh, farmers, you realize the supply of inputs. And because we're facing financial challenges, we've not been supplying enough fertilizers, et cetera, like we used to do. So um, agri um, suffered some reduction in investment. Nevertheless, because we witnessed a very good weather, um, production has increased considerably, and that is a good sign. In as much as you are yet to appreciate the figures or what may have um, accounted for the contraction we saw in the industry sector, um, really, especially with regards to the mining and querying subsector, do you think uh, uh, the contraction recorded in the industry is indeed worrying? Well, it is. I mean, if what accounts for the decline, not the industry in total, industry, I mean, some aspect of industry is picking up. Uh, manufacturing recorded a 2.1% growth, which for me is encouraging, given all the high cost of doing business and, and the various taxes that were uh, imposed. So uh, it's quite encouraging that manufacturing has been resilient and recovering. Um, nevertheless, this area, um, mining and, and firing, for me, we need to delve into that and see what exactly is going on um, within that, that sector. And if there is a need for remedial measures or investment, or re regulation to enhance its uh, production, we should do so. You would also see, um, I, I must admit that if you compare uh, second quarter and third quarter of 2022, realize the growth in the third quarter 2022 was slightly lower than what was recorded in the second quarter of 2022. But then in the last quarter, there was significant growth rates uh, recorded. So I'm cautiously optimistic that the last quarter of this year will turn out some decent growth rate so that on average, uh, we can grow between 2.8 and 3% or even more uh, by end 2023. I, I see. In terms of the size of the economy, the services sector continued to remain the largest sector of the Ghanaian economy, while the industry um, came second and, of course, the agriculture third. Do you think that government's major policies, that's the one district, one factory, and, of course, the planting for food and jobs have had an impact on Ghana's economic growth in that regard? Well, certainly, there's some um, aspects of uh, or subsectors where 1D1F is thriving. You've seen the, I mean, uh, beverage manufacturing. We can mention uh, the Ekunfi fruit juice and, and a few others that are producing um, um, bread and all forms of um, confessionals and many other things. So, in some areas, it's, it's, it's but I think um, that program. Could have achieved a bit more than we, we are recording. Um, nevertheless, one can say that it's contributed to some of the growth rates we are, we are recording um, so far in industry. Um, but I must say, uh, Ghanaian industrialists are very um, hardworking, very resilient, and uh, despite all the challenges, they, they try to um, produce to meet demand. And, and that for me is quite encouraging. So we need to resource um, um, industry more, we need to provide the enabling environment so that industry can grow. Those are the sectors that will generate the jobs, industry, manufacturing, as well as agri and, and of course, by extension services. Mm. A, a quick one on the COCO syndication loan. We do know that um, hopefully by tomorrow we should hit our accounts. Now, um, of what impact do you think this would have on our foreign reserves and, of course, showing up, you know, our reserves uh, basically helping us uh, understand or have a better uh, solid um, forex market? The first thing is that it will stabilize you know, or, or enhance the image of the sector, those the stakeholders engaged in the sector. Once Cocoa Board is able to assess funds and buy Cocoa, uh, you know, I think that will give farmers confidence, give them hope to continue to invest in their farm. So that is the first uh, signal it will send to the Ghanaian economy. Then the forest that it brings, uh, we, it, it, it will go a long way to help Bank of Ghana meet its forest demands. And that, uh, for me, will good. It helps stabilize the exchange rate. Uh, exchange rate stability, or otherwise, 
affects the Ghanaian economy significantly. When we see turbulence within the exchange uh, market, foreign exchange market, it translates into higher inflation, it translates into all kinds of instability. So if we are going to get this injection, uh, that is positive. And hopefully by first quarter or by, by January, we're able to get or receive the IMF uh, second tranche, uh, the better. And, and I think we can then continue to build on, on, on the economy. But uh, of course, people board should ensure that these funds are used judiciously, but they, they are loans that have to be repaid and therefore they ought to be used according to the, what they were purposely uh, obtained. We are grateful, Professor Peter Korti, for your time here on Business Life, sharing your perspectives with us on the latest um, GDP figures. Let's also stay a while longer on this and as we go on Zoom and engage the CEO of the Chamber of Commerce and Industry on the GDP figures, particularly for the industry sector, which we saw some contraction there. Uh, joining us to do that is Mark Bidouabouadji, CEO of the Chamber. Thanks so much, Mark, for joining me on Business Life. First off, what do you make of the contraction in the industry? Do you think something is particularly uh, wrong or may have happened to the industry? Well, I think um, my concern is that the contraction that seems to go away anytime soon because in the first quarter we recorded a contraction uh, within the industry sector and then the second quarter we recorded a contraction of 1.9%. And then for us to see a contraction of 4.3% in the industry sector in the third quarter for me is quite worrying because it's a sector that is supposed to drive the economy and if it's contracting then it's, it's a concern for all of us. But the good news is that we've seen some uh, positive uptend within the manufacturing sector. So the first quarter we recorded a contraction, second quarter we recorded a contraction of 0 0.5. And then if we are recording a growth of 2.5, for me it's positive, but we still have to interrogate the numbers uh, very well. We need to go deep down, delve into the manufacturing sector and look at which subsectors uh, uh, actually stimulating this growth. So we can look at the other sectors that are not doing well and see what we can do to improve uh, the sector. But I think it's a, it's a good sign uh, for the manufacturing sector, and I'm particularly happy about it. All right. Talking about interrogating the figures, um, do you think that the contraction calls for special attention for industry players or the industry specifically, looking at the fact that there has been an important sector for uh, this government over the period? Yes, of course. I think it's a fair reflection of what is happening within the economy. In fact, even though the manufacturing sector, we've recorded some, some growth, Realize that all the difficulties are still uh, lingering on. Uh, interest rate is still high. Uh, we 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 have utility tariffs still also uh, very high. Inflation was high, so the past effect of the inflation that we are experiencing now uh, will be probably will reflect in the in the last quarter uh, of, of the year. So it's uh, we need to have a broader discussion on what is happening within the industry sector. Uh, I think the construction, which is very key actually contracted so hugely, but I think 8.5 or so. Mm. And Prof gave some uh, reasons why um, it possibly contracted. But contractors have not been paid for some time now, and most of the projects are, are there, are abandoned some way, somehow. So let's have a broader discussion on what is happening within the industry sector. In fact, in any developed economy, the industry sector is supposed to be the one driving the economy, to be the one uh, growing. The service sector is a support sector and should not be the one leading our growth. So mm -hmm. the growth trajectory in Ghana seems to have some uh, some unique uniqueness that we need to uh, at least uh, interrogate. If you have a Greek growing, because a Greek, I mean, is a food basket of the economy, and also we can also be exporting, also creating raw materials for the manufacturing sector. In the manufacturing sector is also growing. Then it's good news. I keep on saying it has the biggest and the highest value chain. And when the manufacturing sector is growing, the industry sector is growing, then the economy will be able to grow uh, uh, faster. But now, notwithstanding, you also look at if you look at the first quarter, the economy expanded by 4.3. The second quarter, we had 3.2. And now we have 2.0 uh, growth. And that should be something that we should be. Uh, uh, worried about. We should be asking questions why the growth is, is coming down and what we should be expecting in the, in the last quarter. And this is something that should tell us that we are not out of the woods, yes, and probably we haven't really turned the corner. We still have to do more to ensure that we have a robust 
uh, growth. The economy is still vulnerable uh, to any shocks, and we should not be too much excited. We should work together to ensure that we strengthen uh, the economy, especially the manufacturing sector, drive mm. the growth. I, I, I don't know what your expectations are going into the fourth quarter of next year, which of course will be announced uh, next year. Now, uh, what specifically would you want um, to be looked at, um, especially in relation to the manufacturing sector and of course its subsequent um, sectors? Well, I, I would want to see uh, sustained growth within the manufacturing sector. And that can only come about when we have improvements in the macroeconomic environment and of course, reducing the cost of production. If with uh, inflation coming down, we will, we will see the policy rate also coming down. That will translate into a lower interest rate. Of course, that will motivate and stimulate uh, businesses to uh, contract more loans to expand uh, their businesses. If that should happen, then we expect that the fourth quarter will be quite good and the manufacturing sector will continue uh, to grow. But it shouldn't grow at the expense of any other sector. Whereas ours, other sectors are growing, other, other sectors are also contracting and going down. That is not good for us. There should be a sustained growth. If you really want development, then there should be a sustained growth that will move us from depending on raw materials and agriculture to the manufacturing sector. It should move away from this stagnation that we are having. And that also translates into creating value and reducing poverty and also increasing employment within our economy. So we are hopeful, irrespective of the difficulties that uh, for the fourth quarter will be better. And of course, the, the, the first quarter and the subsequent quarters will see an improvement looking at the way we are moving regarding the stability we have enjoyed within the macroeconomic environment right. and Thank the prospects that we have for the coming years. All right. Thank you very much, Mark Bidwabwaji, for your time here on Business Live, speaking on behalf of the industry and, of course, which we saw some contraction there. We're still watching Business Live. We've got more stories for you. The van after this break. And before we go, the World Bank has announced the appointment of economist Dr. Robert Talerico O'Brien as the new country director for Ghana, Liberia and Sierra Leone in the Western and Central Africa regions. The World Bank in a statement maintained that Dr. O'Brien is expected to assume office on January 2, 2024. He takes over from Frank Pierre Laporte, who is expected to bow out this week. Until Dr. Bryan's appointment, he was the regional director in the Latin America and Caribbean region for the Equitable Growth, Finance and Institutions Department. Thanks so much for watching Business Life. I am Pius Kojo Baka. For more stories, do log on to myjoyonline.com. Do enjoy the rest of our programs. Bye.